Do you ever get that lonely feeling? Like you don't fit in? Like everyone around you gets it, but you just don't. Like they've got something you haven't, like they are something you're not. That feeling of being on the outside, looking in. Like walking out of a shop with nothing but a bag of shame because your card got declined again. Like standing alone in a room full of familiar faces but no one really knows you. Perhaps no one really cares. Like when marriage feels like a battleground and all around are in wedded bliss. Like when your country was destroyed by war and home is all the things you miss. Like the single life that gets you down because sometimes you just need a hand to hold. Like the secret habit that makes you feel ashamed, but try as you might, you just can't kick it. Like walking through an antenatal waiting room when you've just been told, I'm so sorry, but I'm afraid we can't find a heartbeat. That deep ache of separation, of disconnection, of isolation, of feeling lost, you just don't fit, you don't belong, you're a failure, you're just not enough. Those moments when you find yourself shouting into celestial silence, are you there? Do you care? Are you listening? Am I forgotten? Please don't forget me. We all have our own shadows, our own pain, our own lonely. But sometimes in those moments, God shows up unexpectedly. One of those moments came for me in a little girl, a member of my family, on a difficult day at the end of a difficult week, my head full of my own private pain, dark and grey. She walked in and immediately caught my eye. She beamed her beautiful smile and her eight-year-old legs began running as fast as they could towards me. I opened my arms wide and she bounced into them. And as I span her around and around and around, I was struck again by just how much I love her. Her mere existence in the world, her mere presence in my life brings me joy. No matter what she does or doesn't do, she is immensely valuable to me, just because she is. And in that moment, we were not two, but three. A moment of divine embrace that helped me see myself differently. If I could love her that much, then how much more must our creator love her, love me? This vast, wide, deep love that extends to all humanity, a love that made us for one another, that we might not be isolated or lonely. And yet, time and time again, separation rears its ugly head. But that was never the way it was meant to be. Not them and us, just we. So part of what it means to really follow Christ is to live a life of radical inclusion that helps our fractured humanity reunite. Easier said than done, you might say. And you'd be right. What does it look like anyway? Well, I wonder if the place to begin is to start by asking, how much can I risk today? How much courage can I muster up to extend a hand, a smile, even just a look? How awkward am I willing to feel to make a connection, something real, to offer an honest, inquiring question and make space for meaningful conversation? Can I listen? Not just to fix or to respond, but to really try and understand. Can I cultivate a state of mind that sees others generously? Can I befriend someone who's not like me? Can I love without needing us to agree? Can I love without needing to be right? Can I share my own pain, if only a little? If we did, 
Imagine what we might ignite. Because there is a sacred power in human connection, a fullness of life with one another. Those moments of real human to human encounter, God inhabits and weaves us together. And in those moments, we find ourselves in divine embrace.